Hi there, it's Mrs. Drake with the trombone, and we're going to be doing Lesson 16. Lesson 16, I hope you already warmed up on your five-note scales and are ready to go. Okay, let's take a look at song number one. This one's kind of a nice warm-up, too. Um, notice the key signature. Underneath the music, there are some dynamics. The F stands for the Italian word forte, which means to play loud. The P stands for the Italian word piano, which means to play quietly. And then you see there's a big arrow opening up. That means to gradually become louder. And then there's a big arrow shutting that means to gradually become quieter. Those dynamics I don't feel are um, important at elementary school. I just want you to try to get the right notes, try to get a good tone, try to get good rhythm. Later in your life the dynamics are more important. So at this point I'd like you to know what they mean, but I don't necessarily want you to do it. Okay, song number one. Everybody find the first note E flat. Song number one. One, two, ready, go. Song two. I'm gonna need to drink some water. Sorry, everybody, my tone isn't great. I've had a lot of troubles with my lips. Okay, take a look at song two. Ta ta ti ti ta. Let's take it that speed. Everybody, warm up the beginning of song two. Okay, song two. One, two, ready, go. Okay, song three ends up being kind of a long song. I'll take a look at the key signature. Okay, I'm looking through to see if there's any A's in it. Okay, no A's in it. All right. Um, but this one has a new thing called DSL fine. DSL fine. You might remember DC. El fine meant return to the beginning. DSL fine is a type of repeat, but it means to leap back to that kind of strange S shape thing there. That is called a del segno. That's what the DS stands for. De del segno is the Italian word for the sign. The sign. So DSL fine means to leap back to that sign and play and stop again at the word fine. So the strategy on song three is play the first line, play the second line, play the third line, leap back to the del segno, play again, and then stop at the word fine. So it actually ends up being a pretty long song. Alrighty. Alright, so song three starts with some F's. T, T, T. Everybody warm up the beginning of song three. <laughs> Okay, song three. One, two, ready, go. <laughs> some arrows under some of the notes. Those are called accents, and sometimes it's above the note. Accent means to flick your tongue a little harder than you usually do, so the note comes out a little bit louder. I feel it's icing on the cake. The main thing is get the notes right, get the right rhythm, try to get a good tone. If you feel like you have that all under control, then, then you can try to do the accents. Okay, song four. Everybody warm up the beginning of song four. <laughs> Okay, song 
four. Ready, get set, go. <laughs> There's a new note. Gotta grab a drink of water. D flat is fifth position. Alright, so take a look at song five. The first note is C, but please notice that the second note is D flat. And D flat is going to be fifth position. And as you look through song five, you'll see that there's several D flats. And please notice and remember that in measure three, that C, D flat, E flat, and then that one's also going to be D flat. Because it's in the same measure, they don't have to draw the flat sign again. You're supposed to remember it. Um, th those are called accidentals when they change it from the key signature, so the D flats are considered accidentals. And the rule of accidentals is, is in, if it's in that same measure, you, you're supposed to remember it. They like to save ink. So that one right there is D flat also. In fact, as you look through the entire song, every D has to be played as a D flat. Okay. So you know how D is 4th position, and you know how low C is 6th position, so in between would be 5th position, <laughs> and that's what's, what you're going to use for D flat. So to warm up, let's do D, D flat, C. So with the positions, it'll be 4, 5, 6. Listen to that. Try it, everybody, try it. Okay, so song number five. So the first note is C, the next note is D flat. So don't move your slide very much. Only move it about an inch and a half or two inches from C to D flat. Okay, song number five. Everybody find a C. Song five. One, two, ready, go. Song six, another new one. Song six starts with some C's, but then do you notice that the B has a natural sign next to it? So in song six, all the B's are going to end up being B natural. So far, you've always done B flat, but in song six, they want the B's to be B natural. Now, B, low B natural is seventh position. Seventh position, and that's the highest position. That's all it goes to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's it. And if you have short arms, you probably actually can't even reach seventh position. So think where you are for C, and if you can, go a little bit farther than that. In other words, straighten your arm. If you feel like C is already as far as you can go, and remember, ask me. Hopefully, you're not only having to watch this video, but you can have me help you. Um, uh, and as your arms get longer, you'll be able to do it. But the deal is with s with seventh position, as you and do this very carefully, of course. Open your slide till you start to see the stocking. Remember that bump down there is called the stocking, and that's where you put the sl the uh, slide grease and you spray the um. And you can even see my slide grease there. Um, seventh position is technically about one inch past the stocking, so that's where my trombone should be for seventh position. Now I want I'm going to purposely pull this all the way off. Realize that you're almost at the end of the whole thing. See, it's about uh, about five inches past the stocking to where your slide falls off. And you don't want your slide to come off, you guys. The inner slide is very delicate. It gets dented really easily. So you've always got to be careful when you're reaching and getting your slide all the way out. So, ideally, if you have long enough arms, seventh position is where you can see about one inch past the stocking. My arms are long enough. I can reach it. If you can't reach it, then just try to do the best you can. If you can, try to make it sound a little bit different than your sixth position. If you can even just go a little bit further than sixth position. All right, so for sixth position, I don't know if you can see it here. That's what a C should sound like. And then when you go for the B, again, I'm looking for about half inch beyond that. So I'm going to play a C and then a B. 
Try that. See if you can match my tone, but to match my tone, your arms have to be long enough. So you might not be able to match my tone. Try it. Scan through song seven. Do you see that it's all C's and B's? That whole entire song. So if you have short arms, song six probably won't sound exactly right. But remember, eventually your arms will grow. Okay, song number six. One, two, ready, go. natural doesn't get used very often to spell it especially in elementary school okay the one on the bottom is called amazing grace um, remember if you're playing the trombone ignore all the slurs by the way I should have said this if you're playing the baritone or the euphonium low B is all three fingers all three fingers and it should say that up on the top of your page I'm sorry that I didn't mention that before and on song number five the D flat is two three the D flat is 2 3. It should be mentioned up on the top of your page, everybody. Okay, but anyways, on the bottom of the page, Amazing Grace. Um, remember, if you're playing trombone, don't do any of the slurs. If you're playing trombone, do, don't do any of the slurs. Um, if you're playing baritone or euphonium, go ahead and try the slurs. Check out Amazing Grace has three flats B flats, E flats, and A flats. Um, so you got to know your, there are some A's in this song. Do you think you'll remember trombone people to do third position? If you're playing the baritone or the euphonium, um, A flat is first finger. Do you need to write yourself a reminder? If you do, go ahead. It's okay to write reminders. It's better than playing a wrong note. Alrighty, and then this one starts on what's called a pickup note. There's supposed to be three beats in each measure, but you notice in the first measure there's only one beat. So I'm going to lead it off with one, two, and then you just jump right in on that low B flat on the third beat and go through the song. Um, Amazing Grace, the last song on every lesson has a recording that goes along with it. So when you feel that you have Amazing Grace pretty well under control, I encourage you to find that recording I sent you and play it along with the recording. Okay, everybody warm up the first two notes. Okay, Amazing Grace, I'm going to just lead it off with one, two. One, two.